Dr. Larson. I'm a pediatric orthopedist here at the Mayo Clinic, and I'm going to talk to you today about hip dysplasia. Uh, hip dysplasia uh, refers to an abnormal uh, relationship between uh, the ball and the socket of the hip joint. Uh, the hip is a uh, joint with a lot of range of motion, and uh, basically there is a socket, and then the proximal or the top part of the femur bone is, acts like a ball, and that gives you a very large range of motion. Now in infants, up to uh, one in 100 infants will have an abnormal relationship between the ball and socket in the hip joint. Um, one in 1,000 newborn infants will actually have the hip dislocated, where the ball is not sitting in the socket. Up to one in 100 will have an abnormality on clinical exam, and in some countries where they actually ultrasound every single newborn, they will find an abnormality on ultrasound up to 1 in 10 infants. Uh, thus, we don't want to ultrasound. Really, the main uh, screening criteria is a clinical exam. Um, so for uh, a newborn infant, we want to get a very good clinical exam, and you'll find your pediatrician or your care providers will be examining your infant's hip at every uh, visit. If there is something concerning or if there are risk factors such as uh, firstborn uh, female, family history of hip dysplasia, or a breach uh, intrauterine uh, presentation, um, oftentimes we'll get the screening ultrasound as well. We'll wait till about six weeks of age, and if the ultrasound still looks abnormal, many treatment uh, and care providers will want to go ahead and start a pavlik harness. A uh, pavlik harness is a uh, soft, comfortable brace uh, that is very effective at correcting uh, hip dysplasia. Now, hip dysplasia can range from, um, again, the socket being a little too shallow, from the ball sliding in and out of the socket or being unstable, and from the hip being frankly dislocated. And it can be used for all of these conditions quite successfully. Um, if the hip is spending most of its time in the socket, the success rate of the pavlik harness is close to 90%. Um, if the hip is sitting dislocated, uh, there's a little bit lower uh, success rate, uh, but still it can be very effective. So a little later today, we'll uh, show you what a pavlik harness uh, looks like um, and uh, talk a little bit about the treatment of hip dysplasia. Hip dysplasia in infants and small children is painless. Uh, later on in life, in the young adult years or adolescent years, it can be cause hip pain if the socket is too shallow. And even an entirely dislocated hip is uh, painless, but when the child starts walking around one year of age, the child will have a limp. So we try to detect it early because later on uh, surgical treatment is often required for hip dysplasia and at this young age in most children the pavlik harness is very, very effective. Uh, in terms of the future of hip dysplasia, uh, we're working all the time to develop better measures and better ultrasound techniques to decide exactly which infants will require treatment. Um, it's a little controversial if the hip is deeply in the socket and the exam is entirely normal whether or not to proceed with the pavlik harness treatment. Uh, but in my mind, uh, the pavlik harness will see changes in ultrasound within two or three weeks where the hip becomes very, goes from being very shallow to being a deep, normal, um, uh, healthy appearing socket. So I have a low threshold to start the pavlik harness and achieve a normal hip. Uh, we do see teenagers that come in and have lived their whole life and have had mild uh, dysplasia or mild shallowness uh, of the hip socket. And we know that that leads to early arthritis. Um, in those children that are symptomatic in their teenage years, uh, we are uh, doing uh, more of the novel uh, type um, procedures where we can make cuts in the pelvic bone to reorient the socket in space and prevent hip arthritis in the future. This type of procedure though is typically reserved for children with severe dysplasia or children that are having painful symptoms with their hip. In any case, if your infant is diagnosed with hip dysplasia, they likely will be followed by their pediatric orthopedist until their early uh, adult uh, or uh, mid-teenage years to ensure that the hip socket continues to develop normally over time. Thank you very much. So this is the pavlik harness, and this is basically just a kind of a pair of suspenders um, with attachments that go down to the feet and uh, they hold the feet and the legs in that nice frog leg position. So I usually just undo all the Velcro. And then it's easiest to pick up the baby. Here we go! And kind of center them on the harness. And this is a chest strap. And we usually put that on right at or just below the nipple line. And 
want about two or three fingers. This isn't supposed to be tight, it's just a nice, um, comfortable strap. And the important thing is how flexed or how bent the hips should be. You want them bent a little bit, that's the, the purpose. But if they're bent up way too high, then you can hold the hips in an, an abnormal position and potentially even do damage to the hips. So, so if you have an infant in the pelvic harness, they need to be checked every couple weeks uh, to make sure that the hips are fitting appropriately. The other thing to check is that the child can extend their knees. So uh, this little infant is doing a great job right now of straightening his knees uh, because the pelvic harness can actually cause a femoral nerve palsy. The femoral nerve comes down from the front of the leg and when the legs are bent way up like this, just like your leg goes to sleep, if you cross your legs, that femoral nerve can start feeling uh, numb and actually quit working. So we want the parents to check every day that the child is kicking their legs. All right. I'm going to try this on one more time. Here we go. And this little boy's actually completed his treatment, and he's going to be leaning out of the harness now. We're going to fit it and make sure it's big enough for him. Children in pelvic harnesses should be seen every week or two and to make sure that the harness isn't getting too tight because this one is always actually a little bit tight. Put the little suspender straps there. And we'll do a little strap here. I didn't think he's going to roll any day now. <laughs> he looks like he's doing the maneuvers. Okay. Like that. And like that. Good. So because Nathan's been in the pelvic harness, he really likes having his legs flexed up, and that's a comfortable position for him. And if the hip's actually dislocated, we want the legs bent a fair amount, almost to like 100 degrees, um, but because his hips now look great, we're going to move him back to about 90 degrees, about like that, and then we may even give him a little bit more room uh, to grow. having the hips cross midline. So these straps in the back typically are really loose. You don't adjust those at home. And then the ones in the front are just enough to keep the feet in the little straps. Okay, that looks great.